the topic on USA evidence is quite dicey. USA, USA, USA evidence is intertwined with issues of admissibility of evidence and relevance. I would like to make an assertion that this topic on USA evidence is not easy for beginners. I will start with the definition of USA evidence. What is USA evidence? There is a plethora of, of definitions of USA evidence, and I'm going to allude to a few. Uh, uh, Weber says New college, Collegiate Dictionary defines USA evidence as evidence based not on, on, on a witness' previous knowledge, but on, on matters told to him by another. USA is defined as something heard from another. Blackberry's Black's Law Dictionary defines ESA evidence as follows. ESA evidence is testimony in court of a statement being offered as an assertion to show the truth of the matters asserted therein. That is according to Black's Law Dictionary. The common law, uh, the common law definition of ESA evidence uh, was stated in the case of Estate Dewet versus Dewet. What I mean, J, Justice defined hearsay evidence as statements made by a person not called as a witness, which are tendered for the purpose of providing the truth of what is contained in the statement. Extra curious statements or statements which are tendered to establish something other than the truth of what they are stated were not hearsay and were admissible. So the purpose of tendering that statement is very important to whether, whether it's hearsay evidence or not. If the purpose is to establish the truth of what was asserted, then it's hearsay. If it's not, then it's admissible. What is the rationale for exclusion? Generally, hearsay evidence is inadmissible unless it falls within the categories of, of, of ex exceptions. What is the rationale for, for exclusion of ESA evidence? The rationale is that the person, that evidence is not trustworthy, it's unreliable. But the person is not, in, is, is not before the court this evidence cannot be tested through cross-examination. What probative value can we give to that evidence is another issue. It's, it's quite prejudicial to the parties concerned. In that he, can, he is deprived of the opportunity to challenge evidence. To challenge that evidence. That is the rationale why yes, evidence is generally inadmissible. We have got uh, common law exceptions to yes, evidence. Yes, evidence is generally inadmissible, no matter how relevant it is, unless it falls under a particular category of exception. The exceptions of yes, evidence, there are six classes of statement made by deceased persons, which are included in the exception of the ESA evidence. These are statements made against interest, statements in course of duty, in cases of murder and couple of homicide, statement, statements concerning pedigree, statements as to public rights and general rights, and statements, statements as to the contents of a will by testers. I'm going to briefly deal with these exceptions, seriatim, inciting relevant cases. Statements, statement made against interest. This is an oral written statement made by a deceased person. A statement made by a deceased person which is against his pecuniary or proprietary interest. The rationale being that 
no one can make a statement which is against his interest. For this statement to be admissible, it has to be, it, it has to, to meet certain conditions. One, the declarant, the declarant must, must have died. The statement must have been made against the pecuniary or pro proprietary interest of the declarant at the time of making. The, com the most common type of, 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 of the, the most common type of a statement against interest is an admission that that the maker owes some money. That is the against pecuniary interest. Then we have got statements uh, made in the course of duty. All written statements made by a deceased person are admitted to prove the truth of corners if made as a result of as a result of a duty to record or report. And if made with no motive to misrepresent. The case in point is that of Prince versus Earl of Tollington, 1703, it's an English case. In this case, entries made by deceased delivered men in certain records were admitted. The condition of, admi uh, uh, of admissibility of the statements are the declarant must have died. There must have been a duty to record or report. The rep recording or reporting of the act must be contemporaneously with the act itself. The, pre the precise time lapse permissible was not laid down in certain cases. We let's come to dying declarations. This topic is heavily influenced by English law. The general rules of admissibility are that oral or written declaration of a deceased person are admissible to show what caused his death, provided the declaration refers to his death and that he was under a settled hopeless expectation of death, and that he would, would have been a committed witness at the time of declaration. The rationale behind this exception is that no person would wish to be untruthful just prior to his death. This reason is, quite, is questionable. The leading case on dying declaration case is, is, a, is a South African case of R versus Hayes. That is 1910 CPD. The, face, the facts of this case were that the accused was charged of murdering Dora Van, Van Brenda by performing an illegal abortion on her. Two days before her death, a magistrate was called to the hospital and recorded the declaration of the deceased. The declaration commenced with these words, I, Dora Van Brenda, with fear of death before me and without hope of recovery, make the following statement. I am going to die. Miss Hain is the cause of of it all, I want her to go to break water. There, there are five requirements that might be satisfied for, for a daily declaration to be admissible. The five requirements are the declaration must be dead, declarations are accepted for murder and a couple of homicide, the declarant the, 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 the must have had a, separate, a settled hopeless expectation of death. The, the deceased must have given up hope for recovery. The, de, the, the declarant must have been a competent witness. The statement, the statement must be complete. The statement concerning pedigree. Declaration as to pedigree may be admitted in evidence in both civil and criminal matters. The most common written pedigree declarations are to be found in family Bible, which, which may set out the famous genealogy. Inscriptions on tombstones also serve as common examples of, of written pedigree declarations. In Zimbabwe, family trees are consulted on children's issues. The requirement for admissibility were as follows. The declarant must have died. The declarant must have been a blood relative, the, the, the declaration must have been made 
before a family dispute arose. Statements is to public in general rights. This is an oral or written declaration made by the city person concerning matters of public or general rights are admissible if made before a, a dispute arose and if the declarant was committed to make the declaration. Condition for, of, 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 condition for admiss, admissibility are the declarant must be dead, must be dead. The declarant should be should deal with a, the existence of a public or general right. The declaration must have been made before the dispute arose, and the de declarant must have been qualified to speak. Then the other one is the statement made by testers in the context of the way we use. Oral or written statement made by a deceased test testator were admitted to prove the contents of the will made after its execution. The declaration was inadmissible to prove the execution of a will, its alteration or destruction. Then we come to a very uh, important uh, uh, rule of exclusion, yes, evidence. We are talking of spontaneous exclamations. Spontaneous explanation constitutes an ex exception to the ESA rule. The leading case on this is the state of, is the, that of Ara versus Ratten. That is the 1971 case, an English case. In this case, it was held. If a certain event is assumed such intensity in pressure, that the utterance can, only, can safely be regarded as a true reflection of what was actually happening, then it ought, it ought to be received. Another case, but in the above case, was that of Ara versus Taylor. That's a 1961 case. The, the, spontaneous, the spontaneous explanation exclama, exclamation was a strong guarantee that <coughs> the story was not, con con was not contrived or concocted. The extra query was made to spontaneous at the time of or immediately after the event would ordinarily be of more value than a statement made in court by the same person in his capacity as a witness after weeks or months have elapsed and passed. There are four conditions that must be satisfied, satisfied, satisfied before, before the visibility of this statement. Startling occurrence. There must be an occurrence startling enough to produce a stress of nervous excitement. Typical examples are assaults, collisions, even robbery. Spontane, spontane, spontaneity. It is, it, it is required that the statement should have been made while the stress was still operative upon the speaker. That is, reflective powers may be assumed to be in abeyance. The leading case on this is the Vesta Tolo, 1965 case, the South African case. The real test is whether the statement was made at a time when the effect upon the declarant of the shocking occurrence to which the statement is was still operatively, was still operative. That's rendered it unlikely, according to common law experience, that the state declarant at the time of making the statement must have concocted it or attempt to reconstruct it reconstruct the occurrence in his mind. So the issue is, was his uh, 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 mentor, mentor what? Uh,